In 1878, the Horse and Gravity Worked Corris Railway was equipped with three brand new steam locomotives, and an engine shed was built at Meisboith, three quarters of a mile south of Corris, to house them. The site chosen was in the V of a junction between lines serving Corris Ushaf and Corris and Abela Fenny. Originally, the Corris Ushaf branch was considered to be the main or through line as it was steeply graded whereas the track from Corris and Abilifeni was flattened out prior to the junction to make the stopping of gravity trains easier. However, it did not prove practicable to rebuild much of the line to Corris Ushaf for steam locomotives, so the line to Corris and Abilifeni, which was rebuilt, became the main line, while the line to Corris Ushaf became the branch. The engine shed was built to a modular design of the local waste slate and it had a slate roof. One road provided accommodation for the three locomotives, with a pit for each. Inside the shed was a water tank, built from slate slabs. This rested on top of two slate-built pillars. The water was delivered by an iron pipe from another slate tank, which collected water from a spring just to the south of the village vicarage. After passing through the tank, the water was piped outside for the engines, with a system of rods and bell cranks opening and closing the valve to regulate the supply. The shed roof had a vent towards the north end and a metal chimney near the south end to allow the smoke to escape when lighting up the working steam locomotive. At the rear of the shed was a clayware chimney for the forge. This was probably a later addition. Outside the engine shed was a small stable to provide accommodation for the horse that was used to work the Corisu shaft branch, together with a store which was mainly used by the signal and telegraph department of the railway. At the rear of the engine shed was a small corrugated iron-clad toilet which was situated over a stream. At the access to the sheds from the main line was a timber-built signal cabin housing a lever frame to control the points and approach signals. There was also a small timber-clad and slate roof shed attached to the front of the engine shed. This was just large enough to accommodate a four-wheel carriage. A total of ten such carriages of tramway style, with a balcony at each end, were supplied at about the same time as the locomotives. However, the carriages required frequent repair and were reputably uncomfortable to travel in. So uncomfortable were they, that when the first bogey carriage was delivered in 1888, it was reported that the first-class passengers were deserting their carriages in favour of the third-class bogey carriage. All carriages were accommodated in separate sheds at Corris and McCuntleth. Operationally, the engine shed would be occupied by the train crew from about four o'clock each morning to light up the working locomotive. There was usually just the one. At about six o'clock, the engine was driven up to Corris to collect its train to take to McCuntleth, ready for the first up train at about seven o'clock. Despite there being no station or platform at Meispoith, all up trains would stop by the engine shed to take on water. It was the principal watering point on the line. While water was being taken, the driver would refill the bunker with coal kept in baskets. These were placed on timber staging just inside the adjacent window, which was normally open. While all this was being undertaken, any wagons in the train destined for Corris Ushaf would be run back by hand or with a horse, during which time passengers were expected to sit and wait. The shed apprentice or boy would refill the baskets with coal between the trains. On wet and frosty days, he would also sand the rails on the steep gradient just below the sheds to help the locomotives grip the rails. Also present in the shed would be the fitter, working on one of the locomotives, wagons or carriages, and the railway's carpenter, together with visits from the horse driver on the branch to Corris Ushaf. Little changed at Meispoith over the years. Traffic on the Corris Ushaf branch effectively ceased in 1926, and passenger services on the main line were withdrawn at the end of 1930, 
leaving a daily freight service on the main line only, until this was reduced to three days per week, from 1943 onwards. The small carriage shed was removed at some time in the middle 1930s. The signalling system, the signal box and the Corisushaft branch were all removed as part of a second World War drive for scrap. The railway closed in 1948. The line was taken up progressively from late in that year onwards and the sheds were sold to the Forestry Commission in 1952. They used it as a wet weather centre. Here, when weather conditions were unsuitable to work in the woods or to meet the demands of the Forestry Commission's extensive local estate, they made gates, hurdles and fence and flagpoles. To provide access for road vehicles, a ramp was constructed into the yard and the pits in the engine shed were filled in. The newly formed Corris Railway Society leased part of the site in 1975. They took possession of the stable and store building and the track bed to the north outside the area required for road access to the engine shed. Track was laid alongside the engine shed and to the north. This was temporary as the Commission still required vehicular access along the track bed to a small oak woodland which they owned approximately 200 yards to the north. The Society discovered that the stable and store shed retained water and when digging a drain to take the water away it was found that much of the siding formerly covered by the small carriage shed was still in situ, covered by grass and other debris. In 1979 a light track with a sharp curve to the south was laid on which a small simplex diesel locomotive was run. During this time road access to the engine shed had to be maintained. In 1981, the Forestry Commission offered the whole site to the Society, who bought it for the grand sum of £3,000. The Society set about rectifying many years of neglect to the buildings, carrying out extensive patch repairs to the roof, opening up the previously blocked up stable doorway with some new doors, frames and windows. The floor of the engine shed was cleared of a considerable depth of timber debris and sawdust, and the pits emptied. While doing this, volunteers discovered the frames of a man-powered trolley. The timber pit balks to which the rails were fixed were replaced, and new rails acquired to put down inside the shed and temporarily outside. The northwestern window lintel had sunk and was rebuilt, and a new access door created in the next window on that side, to which a steel stairway was built outside while a slate and concrete access to the former windowsill level was built inside. Ducting was erected for electric cabling and much of the walls internally pointed and painted white to improve visibility inside. Former blanked off windows were eventually glazed. The initial track outside the engine shed and stable and store was replaced by a new track on full depth ballast. The excavation for this work revealed the original sleepers from the original track still in situ but heavily waterlogged. Another diesel locomotive of 2 foot 6 gauge was delivered and pushed into the engine shed with the help of a third rail. It joined there an ex RNAD ammunition van from Tracoon in Pembrokeshire, also of 2 foot 6 inch gauge. In time, both these vehicles were regaged and refurbished. Meanwhile, Two XNCB Manrider chassis of the correct 2 foot 3 inch gauge had been acquired and delivered, on one of which a timber bodied passenger carriage in traditional Corris style was slowly built. The Society was later successful in removing the Forestry Commission clauses preventing permanent track being laid north of the sheds, and commencing in 1983, following the delivery of a batch of rail from the Lamberis Lake Railway the temporary track was replaced by semi-permanent track. This track was extended further northwards, while that in Corris extended southwards to abut the land owned by British Railways. Finally, in 1984, BR allowed the two sections to be rail-connected once more. The first train running through on the 20th of April the following year. Works on the trunk road adjacent to the site resulted in its road access being moved closer to the engine shed. 
a car park was created, clear of the rail track. A considerable quantity of rail and sleepers were acquired from the former standard gauge Partington sidings of the Manchester Ship Canal, and stacks of material filled the site. To this was added a number of former RNAD wagons from Broughton Moor, half of which were soon sold on. The yard outside the sheds was remodelled, with track being laid to near the site of the original junction, and the upper Corris tramway was relayed to provide rail access to move materials to assist in the rebuilding of the line. Walls were built to provide a ballast loading area, while the forestry road access was progressively removed and the track was adjusted to replicate the original layout. An ex-Army Meadows generator was acquired, and after the slope between the sheds had been excavated and walled across, it was sited there to provide electricity. The initial passenger carriage was completed and the extra coon van adapted to use as a brake van. In October 1996, to celebrate the former Corris Railway No. 4's 75th birthday, the locomotive paid a brief visit and operated a number of demonstration freight trains. It was housed once more in its original home in Micepoith Shed. In the following years, the east side of the roof was renewed using asbestos cement slates with more skylights. The floor of the engine shed was progressively excavated and concrete floors laid, with the lowered section adjacent to the centre pit to assist future locomotive maintenance. The excavated material, together with that from the yard excavations, was used to form a future platform area adjacent to the engine shed. A signal box was built on the site of the former signal cabin and equipped with a lever frame recovered from Bow in East London. A gantry was acquired and was used in the car park to assist the transfer of materials from road to rail. Machinery was acquired and utilised to construct or adapt items of motive power or rolling stock and other equipment for the railway. A mezzanine floor was added to provide a stores facility and the buildings were listed in December 1999. During 1999, the yard at Micepoith was completely stripped of temporary track. A septic tank and drainage were put in, the former slate boundary fence was removed and the whole yard ballasted before new track was laid. A short platform was constructed with slate edging and a circulation area formed outside the sheds, all fenced as required. Extensive paperwork was carried out and submitted and meetings were held, some of them on site, with Her Majesty's Railway Inspectorate and their staff. An internal telephone system was created to link Micepoith with Corris and the site connected to the mains electricity, telephone and later water supplies. Operations were practised in anticipation of eventually operating passenger trains with a corps of trained volunteer staff. The first passenger train to operate on the rebuilt railway ran from Corris on the 3rd of June 2002 using diesel locomotive number 6, which by now was fitted with a cab, and the passenger carriage and van, both by now fitted with automatic air brakes and a communication system. In celebration of the achievement, the Talaclin Railway offered to lend former Corris Railway steam locomotive number 3 for the month of June 2003, together with the former Corris carriage number 17, two wagons and the former Corris brake van. In anticipation of this, a new siding was laid to allow trains to alternate, thereby allowing all passengers to sample both forms of traction in one return trip. A toilet block was constructed on the former site of the Meadows generator. The turnouts were connected by rodding to the signal box. A new built bogey carriage, also in Corris style, was delivered shortly beforehand. Until the last weekend of that month, every seat was sold. After 12 years of fundraising and 10 years of construction, a brand new steam locomotive, number 7, a close look-alike for the original number 4, was delivered in May 2005. After staff training and testing, it operated its first passenger train on the 20th of August. 
That was 57 years to the day from the operation of the last train on the original railway. However, the steam locomotive and two passenger carriages filled the engine shed. All other locomotives and rolling stock had to live outside, where their condition did not improve. Nevertheless, the frames of a second bogey carriage were fabricated in the engine shed, but further work on this was delayed for want of covered accommodation. Work to build a carriage shed at a lower level and adjacent to the yard commenced in February 2006, starting with drainage and then foundations, working progressively southwards in steep, sidelong ground. A temporary access road from the south enabled the delivery of concrete and other building materials. Steel sections were fabricated in the engine shed for the new building and were assembled as foundations were completed and then roofed over. The walls were then blocked in and clad in timber to replicate the appearance of the former station at Corris. Once the shell was complete, track panels were fabricated and concreted in or constructed on steel framing over the pits. Meanwhile, the platform area was extended and track components prefabricated, and once the building was complete, the whole approach was reprofiled, ballasted, and track laid and connected up with the existing yard. The majority of this was achieved over a three-week period to enable the new shed to be opened as the first official duty of the then new chairman of Gwyneth Council, Councillor Anne Lloyd-Jones of Tawin, on the 9th of May 2009. Just a few weeks earlier, as part of the railway's 150th anniversary celebration, horseworking and gravity trains were demonstrated to popular appreciation. A second platform has been constructed adjacent to the carriage shed and the track layout within the yard further refined since. The original Corris locomotive number no. 3 made a further visit in 2012, operating trains with number no. 7 for a few weeks. Further work has followed, including in 2013 the re-roofing in mineral slates of the western side of the engine shed the whole of the stable and store area. For this the Society was very thankful for the assistance of a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund. For No. 7's 10th year of operation, the engine shed was equipped with a new gantry and lighting to enable volunteers to strip the locomotive down, have the boiler inspected and be reassembled solely by volunteers in one winter. Inside the carriage shed, a new bogey carriage has been built and it was exhibited at the National Exhibition Centre in November 2013. It entered service on the railway on the 6th of September 2015. A further two carriages to basically the same design are also under construction and heritage wagons are being constructed, repaired and refurbished from time to time for use on the demonstration gravity trains and photo charters. Meispoith Shed has been at the heart of the Corris Railway since 1878. It is used more now than it ever has been and it is hoped that it will continue to be the railway's engineering centre for many more years to come. <laughs>